Hey guys, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. So I am coming on with a special message here for the new moon in Gemini, okay? Um, I've had a day. <laughs> I did my shifts at the bookshop. Thank you for those of you that came out to see me. I really appreciate meeting you in person and I hope we can continue to connect in the future. Yeah, email me, let's chat. Um, but spirit is really pushing me to do this message. There is a message, and, and actually this is something that I was thinking about all day, to be honest. Um, but I figured, you know, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. So I detached from it, <laughs> and that's my notebook, don't mind that. Um, I, I detached from it, and then I got home, and I was in the middle of doing laundry, and spirit was pushing me to do this message. So here I am. Yay! New moon in Gemini. What can we expect? Well, first of all, what is a new moon? Excuse me. A new moon. A new moon is a moment to plant seeds, okay? Um, understand that this is symbolic. Everything in the three-dimensional world is, in fact, symbolic, okay? This is symbolic of greater spiritual principles and cycles that... Um, our conscious minds are working towards making sense of, okay? So we can understand our realities. So symbolic being this, these, this moon phase and other moon phases, like the full moon, the full moon is a period to release something. The new moon is a period to plant seeds for something that you wish to manifest, okay? So in this period, we have a chance to um, plant some seeds and work towards things that we are trying to manifest in our lives. Now, first and foremost, I would advise that if you are going to plant seeds for something to manifest in your life later on down the road, I would highly recommend <laughs> that these seeds that you plant are, with an are within alignment of your higher self and your goals and your life mission. Please do not plant or try to plant any seeds to create something with someone um, outside of their will. Do not plant seeds in, uh, 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 with intentions of getting someone to do something that they may not necessarily do. Instead, plant your seeds with intentions to develop a reality that you desire for your highest good and also for the highest good of other people that are going to be involved, okay, moving forward. So, with this in mind, Specifically, within the sign of Gemini, <laughs> this is a little bit of a contradictory period, and um, I did very, very minimal research on this, so uh, I would recommend that you follow this reading up with um, some research of your own. This this new moon is on the 13th, and I'm recording this on the, the night of July 11th, okay? So you have a little bit of time to do some research and figure out how this is going to work for you, all right? Um, but from what I understand about it so far, this new moon in Gemini, Gemini is pretty contradictory. Um, this is either a brand new start or what the F is this? <laughs> like, like a complete, I want to say the complete opposite of a brand new start, but that's Gemini, right? Okay, so that makes sense. Um, so spirit is really pushing me, really pushing me, really guiding me to bring some sort of message forward. Okay. And I started shuffling the cards, um, just to get the energies into the cards. I'm going to be using a traditional tarot deck. I will be using the tarot Illuminati deck, which I used in my last twin flame reading, um, titled divine feminine is laying low and I, Unfortunately, don't remember what the Divine Masculine headline was. Oops. But <laughs> I did use this deck in that reading, and I will be using it moving forward because it's the sister deck to the Tarot Apocalypsis deck, of which some of you already know because I've been using that one for a while. Um, but I was... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm using the Tarot Apocalypse... Oh, I'm sorry, the Tarot Illuminati to get the general energies, and then I will be using the Fairy Forest Oracle, the Oracle of Unicorns, uh, and the Crystal Mandala deck, and I might pull from the area of Animal Spirit deck, that one right there. I'm not quite sure, it's not 
written in stone yet, but the other three are definitely wanting to come forward to bring us messages, okay? Um, but I was shuffling the tarot deck and <laughs> some cards popped out. So let me adjust here and I will show you what I got because I started to write down some of the message, but um, I've found that ultimately what I was channeling and you see my notebook here. What I was channeling um, was better off just me starting here and then just bringing the message to you as I heard it, okay? So we have, the, what, and literally I was shuffling the deck and these two cards popped out. We have the emperor and the princess, or in other words, the page of pentacles. I'm sorry, not pentacles. <laughs> there goes my notebook. Not pentacles, but the page of cups in reverse. Okay, both of these are in reverse, as you can see. Um, 555 on the counter. There is a lot of change that's happening, guys. And underneath the deck, we have temperance, okay? Twin flames, you're already getting the message. Um, the Emperor is the depiction of the Divine Masculine. Um, and I, please understand that this, this reading, the messages that are coming through in this reading are not just for Twin Flames. Okay? I really just want to put that out there. This is not just for Twin Flames. This is the human collective. Ultimately, what Twin Flames are going through um, are things that everybody can learn from. Um, okay? So... You could, you don't have to be in a twin flame relationship on a twin flame path to resonate with some of the things that are happening, okay? Um, because ultimately we are here to teach. Um, we are here to usher in this new paradigm, this fifth dimensional paradigm. And with the fifth dimensional paradigm comes the reality of divine partnerships, which is ultimately what a twin flame relationship is, okay? Twin flame relationships are no different really than divine partnerships. The difference between a divine partnership and a twin flame relationship is that the twin flame, the twin flames have a, a different responsibility, a responsibility to teach and help heal. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn, guys. I'm speaking from experience here, okay? <laughs> I mean, look at my channel. I'm not trying to be an asshole. Anyway, um, even if you're not on a twin flame relationship, you can resonate with this because ultimately we all have masculine energies and feminine energies within us. And, um, the ultimate goal for every being, every human being on the planet is to balance these masculine and feminine energies. And this is the number one task of a twin flame relationship. Okay. So with all of that said, we have the emperor in reverse and the princess, or also known as the a page of cups in reverse. What does this mean? It means the first thing I got with this is that the masculine energies are purging. Okay. They have an opportunity to release this lacking, lacking mentality when it comes to emotions, when it comes to relating with others on an emotional and even spiritual level. Because ultimately, your emotions will lead you to spiritual awareness, yes? Um, so this is, this is what, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> My eyes were closed and I was channeling, so I didn't realize that the cards were out of frame. But, um, this is leading to a lot of purging when it comes to masculine energies. It's really, it's, it's, it's leading to, um, balance ultimately. It's leading to a new opportunity for those who identify with masculine energy versus those who identify with feminine energy like me. Um, it's giving them the space to bring in this more mature and beneficial awareness of emotions, but also of spirituality and spiritual nature and spiritual reality. And underneath the deck, we have temperance and temperance is upright. So, hey, twin flames, check it out. This is a big opportunity for masculine energies to reach a greater sense of balance. Yeah. Other than that, um, everyone be on notice 
that you have an opportunity to plant some much more beneficial seeds, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna shuffle these up a little bit and then let's get into the messages. Uh, I'm most likely going to <laughs> I'm most likely going to have to pause this video. Please excuse me. It's been a long day. I'm pretty tired, but I'm gonna I'm most likely gonna have to pause this video because I am in the middle of doing laundry. Yeah, and I just shuffled things up for a bit, and I was guided to look at the bottom of the deck, and we still have the Emperor in reverse. So this is the name of the game, guys. Whether you're masculine or whether you're feminine, this is a big opportunity to release this old paradigm. Release this um, twisted masculine energy. Plant the seeds of creating a brand new beneficial reality and future when it comes to you and, you and your masculine energies and the masculine energies around you, okay? Um, choose what kinds of masculine energies you wish to interact with, all right? 11-11 on the counter. There it is, guys. So, Awakening, change, um, fully identify the type of masculine energies that you wish to have in your life. Because please understand that not all masculine energies are bad, all right? This is conditioning speaking. Um, when it says that oh, all men or all masculine energies are terrible and bad, and rah, rah, rah. And it's also conditioning that says that all all feminines and all women energy, feminine energies and women are bad. Rah, rah, rah. Not, not screw that. Okay. It's time to let go of all that stuff. All right, guys. So as you're planting your seeds in this new moon, um, make sure to identify the type of healthy, beneficial relationships, mutual relationships that you wish to have with masculine energies, okay? It's time to change the paradigm, guys. It's We have an opportunity to plant the seeds, and I don't know what it is. I've been wanting to do um, videos on moon cycles for some time now, but I just never got to it. For some reason, this moon itself, and if you understand why, if you have the knowledge, please put it down there in the in, in the in the the comments, um, because there is something about this moon that is really really pulling pushing me to pull these messages for us for all of us. This is not just for twin flames. This is for everybody. This is for the human collective. Okay, all right, and I didn't say it already because I was diving straight into the message, but this is a divine conversation. So, smoke them if you got them. Get yourself a cocktail. Pour yourself a glass of wine. Have a beer. Let's chat. Yay. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here we go, guys. So, Gemini, uh, a Gemini new moon. What are the best messages for the, I'm going to say the awakened collective, because those of us that are not awakened won't be watching this video, right? There's that. No shade. But still, I mean, it's fact. So, okay, one more shuffle for the moon. And I honestly don't even know, I haven't picked, even. I haven't even picked out a spread for this, guys. This is how much I'm just going on a whim here because there are there really are some messages all right so spirit is really pushing me to 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 do this and i'm literally just following my intuition right now um okay we've got the 10 of cups in reverse this is the old paradigm all right this is the wish fulfillment the emotional fulfillment that we were sold um that we were taught was what we wanted. But then we soon found out it wasn't even close, all right? We've got the Three of Cups upright. We've got the Ten of Wands <laughs> upright. And we have the King of Cups upright. All right, look, guys. All right, uh, if you're familiar with my channel, if you're familiar with my spreads, 
this is going to be a freestyle reading. Um, but all I'm seeing with the Three of Cups is victory. Okay, celebration of this release of this Ten of Cups, this false emotional reality, this pipe dream we were sold. We also have the Ten of Wands, though. So we do have completion, but understand that we are still going to have to carry some burdens moving forward, okay? This is not going to be a clean slate wipe, all right? This is not going to be a wipe. This is not going to be... Um, you know, we wake up tomorrow or we wake up the next day and it's a clean slate. All right. We're still going to have to do some work. There are still some burdens that are going to need to be carried in order to really clear this energy. Right. But the point at this moment in time is that we do the work to set the stage so that we can, yes, continue to carry these burdens for a little bit longer. But ultimately, we will have a, a moment or a chance to set them down. And hello, underneath all of that, we have that motherfucking king of cups, y'all. And he's upright. All right. So the divine masculine or masculine energies are giving, are being given a chance to really rectify is what I just heard. To really step into their true power. And this is not, I, I, I don't want this to sound like it is, um, a responsibility that is all on the shoulders of the masculine. That is not the case. We Ultimately, we are a collective. Ultimately, we all have masculine and feminine energies. So um, we all have a responsibility in this, okay? Just like the masculine needs to release some energies, the feminine needs to release some energies as well. So we're working together. We are, in fact, a collective. But the theme of this new moon is planting the seeds to create the reality of the true ten, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> ten of cups. No, yes, ten of cups because there are endings, but, but the king of cups, okay? The true king of cups. And I, I please, and look, my heart just jumps with joy every time I see the ten of cups, the king of cups upright. Why do I keep wanting to say the ten of cups? Because we're trying to turn the Ten of Cups upright. But my jump, my heart jumps with joy whenever I see the King of Cups upright. Please, excuse me guys, it's been a long day and I'm super tired. But I really, I really, I'm really being pushed to do this message and honestly I want to do it. So let's do it. Um, this is going to be somewhat of a shorter reading. I'm just going to do one column. If you're familiar with me and you're familiar with my readings, you know that I normally do two columns of four sets of cards um but because there are going to be so many other messages coming through through other decks um i feel i only need to do one column all right so let's get into this we have the oh, wow 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 guys we're starting off with death i mean come on change transformation i mean we're going from a manipulative a manipulative point of view to a beneficial to a loving a compassionate and a caring point of view so yes there is going to be a there is going to be a moment of transition a period of transition and this is why we're going to need to carry to continue to carry the 10 of wands burdens forward just a little more and I want I want to point out to you you see guys this guy has just not too many more steps to go over before he reaches that structure okay we don't have that much further to walk or to travel until we learn uh, until we learn our lessons yes but ultimately until we reach our destination okay so we're starting off with death transformation and death is upright and we're we that's coupled with the prince or the knight of swords in reverse so this is a release um wow it's a release of this aggressive and combative and destructive energy this is a release of a sort a sort of uh, i'm not going to say an overall but a sort of war-like energy. Someone that is really just ready to go to war to defend their identity. Okay? 
I'm going to just go out and say it and go out here and say it because this is how I heard it. This is a release of the defense of the ultra, I'll say, the ultra defense of masculinity. All right. And I'll back that up by um, an example. I was at work and a friend of mine said that something, basically something offended their masculinity. And in the back of my head, I'm like, really? Your masculinity is that fragile? <laughs> This is exactly what we're talking about here. Okay. Oh, that's all right. Um, next, I'm moving forward. We have the Page of Pentacles in reverse. There's a lot of um, immature energy that's being released. I'm just going to say that. Page of Pentacles is in reverse. Wow. And we have the Page of Swords in reverse. This is energy that's being released. Attachments to... And I know, I understand, I get it. I know a new moon is not about releasing things. A new moon is about planting new seeds. But these are, these are things that are being let go of. These are ways that you can plant new seeds. So, the, so in this, it's so weird. And it makes, I guess this makes sense. Because this new moon is in Gemini, all right? So we have contradictory elements here. While it is a new moon, this is a moment of planting seeds. Technically, overall, when we talk about the cycles and their true meaning, we have this new moon in Gemini. So not only is it a moment, a moment of um, planting new seeds, but it's also a moment of release, okay? So... <laughs> The, the messages that are coming through me right now are what can we release in this new moon? What can we focus our intentions on? What can we focus what we choose to manifest with this energy through what we can release? There it is. Okay. What can we focus on manifesting in the future? through what we can release in this moment. Yes? All right. So we have the Page of Pentacles and the Page of Swords. Immaturity all around. Immaturity mentally, immaturity uh, physically. Yes. Wow, there's nothing else to say there. Let's move forward. We have the Eight of Wands, guys. We've got swift movement. So this um, this new moon is really going to... Um, things are going to move quickly. Manifest manifestations are going to grow quickly. There could be some communication that comes in with this new moon. Um, there could be some... You could be planting seeds of um, having communication. Some of us could be planting seeds of being able to engage in communication, like those of us that have been scared or um, hesitant to reach out. Now, Divine Feminines on a Twin Flame journey, please understand I am not suggesting that you reach out to your Divine Masculine right now. That is not something we need to do. Okay. Just going to put that out there. <laughs> but... In this moment, Divine Feminines that are desiring communication, you could plant some seeds that will ultimately bring communication to fruition. Now, this does not mean you do not have to do your own work, okay? But you could plant the seeds to, to, to grow the plant and do the work that is required to help that plant flourish, yeah? Okay, the Eight of Wands is coupled with the Eight of Pentacles. What did I just say? Doing the work. Oh my God, wow. Lord have mercy. If you want communication from someone, then you need to show, okay, if you want communication from someone in a certain way, if you want a certain type of relationship with someone, if you want a certain type of reality in your life, then you need to do the work to set the stage for that reality to come roaring in. 
with the Eight of Wands. Yes, because the Eight of Wands is about swift movement. It's also about swift communication. Instant communication. The Eight of Wands often talks about emailing, um, texting, both social media, modes like that. But in order to receive it, you still have to set the stage, guys. So this is where the uh, manifestation aspect of the new moon in Gemini comes into play. Okay, we were just talking about, um, wow, whoa. We were just talking about the things that can be released during this new moon, and we got two pages. Okay, we were then moving forward and talking about the things that can be manifested within this new moon, and we got two eights. Abundance, guys. But you have to do the work, all right? Finally, in our storyline, we have the Four of Cups with the Nine of Swords. So, um, all right, this is another aspect that we're releasing. Four feminine energies. This does not mean you're on a twin flame journey, but for feminine energies, this is the release of anxiety over unrequited love. If he never responds to you, who effing gives a damn? Because ultimately, if you are standing in your integrity and if you are standing in your power, that's his or her loss, period. And never should you have to feel like you are less than because someone decided not to really look at what you really bring to the table, what your true value is. Now, your responsibility is working on generating, planting the seeds of connecting with individuals that are actually going to see your value, um, attracting individuals into your life that will see your value, that want to see your value. Not just that they can or maybe that they're obligated to, but they actually do. They actually want to connect with someone that knows their worth and wants to provide in a relationship that the way a feminine energy can and will. Yeah? For masculine energies, it's the mirror. It's knowing your self-worth as well. And knowing that you are absolutely worthy of a beneficial, loving, caring, nurturing relationship. But masculine energies, you have to get in touch with your emotions first. Okay? The universe has been trying to hand you this cup of emotional value for the longest time. So now it's time to plant the seeds of... Being able to accept this, being receptive to this. Because ultimately, this is still part of your reality. Masculine energies. Yeah? There is no masculine without feminine. And there is no feminine without masculine. We are one in the same, guys. Look at that. King of Cups. Right there. And he's upright. Bam, ba -ti bam, bam. <laughs> okay, next we're going to get into the fairy forest deck. There are some messages that want to come through from there. So, give me a second here. Let me shuffle this a little bit. New moon in Gemini. What messages do you have for us from the fairy forest deck? Um, and this is by Lucy Cavendish. Yes. New moon in Gemini. Woo! All right, we have one already, and that is ass drilled, love free, sensuality, and fertility. Okay. So the channel me channeled message there is, um, I'm sorry, not love free, love fire. 
love fire. Okay. But even still, the message of love free still stands. Um, I really feel like that's what this card is talking about here. Being able to love freely. Um, and that is absolutely what the King of Cups is all about. Okay. The King of Cups is not someone that's just going to love someone because they have to. All right. The King of Cups is stable and balanced within his or her emotions. Um, and they know that love is the key. Love is the root of all. Love is why we all exist. So the King of Cups is not afraid to love. The, the King of Cups will love differently, yes, than the Queen of Cups. But ultimately, when it comes to masculine energies, the King of Cups knows that love is everything. Okay, so uh, love fire, or at the same time, we can say love free, sensuality and fertility, being in tune with one's sensuality, being in tune with one's own sense of fertility, okay? Just because you're a masculine energy, it does not mean you do not encompass the feminine, the femininity, the feminine aspects, tw oh, wow, 222 on the counter. Um, it does not mean that you not, do not have a sense of your own femininity, your own fertility, your own sensuality, okay? And in this new moon, we all have an opportunity to plant new seeds when it comes to fruitfulness in the sense of masculine sensuality and fertility. I also want to point out that this card is card number 10. So we have yet another depiction of completions. We had the 10 of cups in reverse. We have the 10 of wands upright. Okay. So endings, endings around guys. All right. Two more cards, please. One, the ancient elder experience lessons. Okay. So this is a major period of wisdom, of learning, of understanding the fruits of our labor. This is similar to the seven of cups, which not the seven of cups, excuse me, the seven of pentacles, which did not come out in the tarot, but, um, is now coming out with this card, the ancient. Okay. Um, this is understanding the fruits of our labor. This is understanding how we've gotten to this place to begin with. This is understanding the wisdom in uh, all of us as a spiritual collective choosing to experience these certain things so that we can learn from them and then, um, grow into greater aspects of ourselves. Okay, both spiritually and physically, to be honest, because spirit, because physically we all embody these spiritual aspects. Okay, so we're a reflection of our spiritual growth, right? So we come here into the physical world to um, learn and grow and to expand spiritually, and ultimately that is reflected physically. Yes. And I, do, I am going to read from the book because I already feel like there are some messages that need to come through that I am not channeling. Um, and I'm not channeling them because they are found in the book. All right. One more card, please, Spirit. Nope. One more. One more, please. Here we go. Soul kin. <laughs> wow. Recognition, family, and kinship. Okay. Wait, no. There's, there's one more, guys. And it's this one. Finally, we have Ethling, nobility, grace, and gratitude. All right. So, Athling, Atheling. I'm I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. But anyway, um, getting to soul kin. This is recognizing. I, I didn't hold up the ancient card, um, so I'm going to do that now. This is the ancient. Okay. This is our lesson in everything, basically. <laughs> this is the reason why we even came into this physical existence, this physical reality to begin with, right? Again, I am going to read from the book to get deeper messages, but that's what I'm channeling. As far as channeling, next we have the Soul Kin card, and this is card number 16. Okay, so this boils down to a seven. Again, we're talking about wisdom. We're talking about experience. We're talking about uh, specifically in this card, we are talking about um, recognizing who we are as individuals 
and who we are as a soul family. Understanding that we are all here for each other. We don't ever have to feel alone, ever, because we are all connected. We are all one, okay? So just because someone that is seemingly external to us is going to through a situation that we don't necessarily identify with because in this physical reality that we find ourselves in, in this current moment, we did not experience something like that. It does not mean that we cannot connect with them and connect to their experience and connect to lifetimes in which we've had a similar experience. Yes? So this is a lesson. This is an eye opener. This is a moment for us to plant some seeds to start to recognize the connection that we all have with each other to start the rec to recognize the fact that we are all one none of us are ever alone and none of us are ever separate from another it may seem like that it may look like that it may feel like that but ultimately that is not the truth of our reality okay we have athling which is the final card that came out this is card number six all right the ancient is card number 45. That boils down to a nine. That is endings and completion. That makes perfect sense. That is coming to the end of a cycle in which we have learned a lot. And now we can put all of the things that we have learned into focus and now move forward in our next cycle, which technically would be number 10 since this boils down 45 boils down to a nine but ultimately tens boil down to a one a brand new beginning and the first card that came out from this deck which is the fairy forest deck we have astrild which is card number 10 okay great so athling the last card that came out is a card number six and this is the card of harmony and in the love and home okay in the home and love relationships things like that athling is nobility grace and gratitude this is absolutely about being humble in regards to this reading okay in regards to um the energies that we're facing with this new moon in gemini okay we need to be excuse me, we need to be humble and we need to recognize and remember our nobility and our no divinity, excuse me, our divinity, our nobility and our divinity. And we need to stay in tune with the fact that no matter what any of us have been through, any sort of circumstances that we have experienced in our physical life, ultimately we are still deserving of divine grace. Yes, because grace is the other, the last uh, uh, keyword of that card that I did not express. Okay, so I want to read um, from the ancient, maybe Soulkin, but also Athling. All right, so the ancient, card number 45. Um, and for those of you that are familiar with this deck, um, Ragnarok keeps catching my attention and if you're familiar with this Ragnarok is um, almost like the phoenix rising from the ashes Ragnarok is about destruction in order to create something new and something better something more beneficial and the only reason I'm mentioning this is because as I was flipping to the page for the ancient I stopped briefly on Ragnarok. Ha ha ha! There's a lot of change happening, guys. Okay, the ancient elder experience lessons. The ancient is so old, she is almost beyond time. She is able to speak the truth without compromise, as are you when this card comes to you. She is so old, has experienced so much, learned and taught so many lessons that she has become powerful and influential just as you are becoming too. So too are you growing older, coming into wisdom. She knows that while others are now going to come to you for advice and guidance, she sees your humanity, your faults, your flaws, and your feelings of unworthiness. 
She wishes to assure you. Others will come to you seeking knowledge, awaiting a blessing, an initiation, and oblivious to the consequences of the path they wish to walk. Wisdom, true wisdom, understands complexity, and you have developed this quality. The ancient is honorable and human, and yet more than human, and she is courageous and has made sacrifices, as have you. She sees straight through comforting illusions, as you do. She represents ancient tradition and the challenge of defining the self, yet remaining within a tradition that you value. And this too is one of your challenges. So take responsibility in your life. You will face the battle of choice and you will be the antidote to gurus and dominant personalities who claim to have all the answers. The ancient recognizes the challenge of being a teacher. This immersion in a world to learn the ancient arts and venerate wisdom and old ways can be expressed in many forms, but everything you now you are now learning has value. She is the repository for ancient secrets and, this, and the connection between worlds. She is wise, and she has learned to consider every word that falls from her lips, even as she longs to call out for freedom. I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> the only other card that I truly want to read is Athling, and I might get to Solkin afterwards. But let's go to Athling first. I don't, I'm really not even sure if I'm saying that correctly, but there's that. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm so tired. It's been a long day. Okay, Athling. Nobility, grace, gratitude. Heavy is the head who wears the crown. But within every moment, within all responsibilities and circumstances, lies the opportunity to be noble and to be graceful, uh, to be graceful, to be grateful. And this is Athling, a wise being who is able to listen to the pleas and the requests and the demands and to respond without pressure or frustration or tension. She is able to distill the clamor about her into calm and focus on one simple deed at a time. She is not, not one to sacrifice herself, nor will she allow herself to be influenced and dominated. Nor is she overwhelmed, despite the vast nature of her, re, of her realm and her responsibilities. She wears her duties lightly, just as she does this crown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is your message. Find a way to slow down the demands of your life, create boundaries, cease feeling so obligated to sacrifice your needs to the needs of others who are simply noisier and more entitled. And I, and it's not in quotes, but I'm going to put entitled in air quotes. Mm -hmm. For this moment, breathe and still yourself and then carefully move forward, focusing on one thing at a time, giving each task your absolute attention. Now is the time for you to be as gracious when you say no as when you give your agreement. To never be cruel or snap or condemn simply because it would be easier to do so. Athling reminds us that even when under pressure, with duty and status come great responsibility. And we must remember our blessings in order to develop our own contentment. We must extend patience and endow others with dignity, be kind, and be grateful that we have the opportunities that we have to change the world for the better every day. That's a beautiful message. And I do want to read Solkin, so I'm going to do that now. <laughs> Solkin, recognition, family, kinship. We often wish for our relationships to endure long beyond their lifespan. Friendships and relationships have been drawn to us according to the lessons the soul wishes to learn. There are relationships that are more superficial, and then there are those that touch us deeply. With great love comes the possibility for pain, and each of us must come to some kind of peace with the truth that there are relationships that will not be sustained for this lifetime. When we feel this deep recognition, and when we find it very difficult to let a person go, we may be dealing with a soul kin. 
a being with whom we may be traveling through lifetimes. This thread of relationship is strong and connected with you at present, and you have encountered a person who speaks to your very soul. Know that for now, this connection is grounded, nourishing, and full of faith. It may shift and, and change in time, but for now, the friendship is strong and full of mutuality, respect for each other's growth, and dedication to the highest purpose for you both. In time, this may change as your souls have their own destinies and this sometimes means there will be a departure from a common code and path. But for now, this connection is one of soul family, of kin, and is one you can draw on for your own sustenance and also contribute to for the beautiful purpose of being a shining light for others. Okay, now this is a little bit of a twisted message when it comes to soul kin, and I don't like to say it that way, but that's kind of how I'm feeling it, so that's how I'm going to express it. Um, this is talk soul kin is talking about the cycles that are ending. It's talking about the recognition of people that are in fact meant to be in your life at this moment in time, but that does not mean that they're meant to be in your in your life forever okay we are in a period of ending cycles and starting something new right so there's going to and just like the ten of wands speaks of what speaks about here upright this is there is going to be a period of needing to move forward needing to release these things but not necessarily being able to do it just yet okay so with that said, I'm being advised to say, enjoy your time together. Do not look at this ending phase, this ending period as a loss, so much as look at it as a transition. Hello, a transition, because we've got death here. All right, transition. Honor. I can't pick up the card. Okay. Honor and respect the path and the road that you all have traveled. If there is going to be somebody that you are releasing in um, planting new seeds for future gain, honor this time you've had together. Respect this time you had together. Rejoice in this, ha in this time you've had together. But ultimately be okay with the fact that this time is coming to an end. Okay, I'm going to get some action steps here from the Unicorn of Oracles. Uh, two cards in relation to this new moon in Gemini. Okay, two cards please, Spirit. <clears throat> in relation to this new moon in Gemini. From the... Uh, Oracle of Unicorns here, Spirit. What do you wish, what messages do you wish to send us in relation to this new moon in Gemini? What are some action steps that we as a collective can take? We've, wow, we've got intuition, which falls right in line with the King of Cups, guys. And we've got adventure. adventure. Okay, just because the King of Cups is a masculine energy, it does not mean he is not intuitive. All right, so... Action steps. The first card that came out is intuition. Listen to the whisper of your heart. Use divination tools to help you decide. <laughs> Trust your intuition no matter what. All right. It's really time to let go of the paradigm of um, dominance, of logic and tangible evidence over the wisdom and the whispers of the intuition. All right. I feel like you guys can't see this card. Can you see it better now? I'm so sorry if the screen was too dark. But but see, now there's all kinds of glare. Ugh. Anyway, um, just listen to your intuition, guys. This is really a time, if you have been wanting to plant seeds that will help you um, build a better foundation with your intuition, now is the time to do it. Okay? We have a release of 
overly burdensome masculine energies at this moment. We have a moment where you can really plant seeds that will allow you to be more intuitive, to understand the laws of nature, to understand the laws of spirit and the ways of spirit much, much more. All right? Like I said earlier, th this new moon is unique. It's in Gemini. So while it is a moment to plant seeds and, and prepare for the future and start to manifest things for the future, it, conversely, and oddly enough, it's also a moment of release. All right? Finally, from the, or from the Oracle of Unicorns, um, our final action advice, we have adventure. Dare to do things differently. Manifest your travel dreams. Move to a new location. Now, this could be moving to a new location physically, or it could be moving to a new location energetically, all right? This could be moving into a new vibrational reality, yeah? Um, and this is, that's all about, that's what a full, a, a new moon, excuse me, that's what a new moon is all about. It's it's creating something new. It's planting, the, like I keep saying, planting the seeds to create something new. Yeah, but this is also talking about not being afraid to embark on a new ad adventure, not being afraid, afraid to dive into the unknown so that you can experience greater truths, greater realities about the life that you live, about the reality that you live in, okay? That's beautiful. All right. Um... Finally, I'm just going to pull some spiritual advice Ooh. from the Crystal Mandala deck, okay? So spiritual advice uh, when it comes to this new moon in Gemini, okay? What does spirit have to advise us with? from a spiritual point of view, because spirit has been advising us this whole time throughout this reading, okay? Spirit just gave us um, further messages from the Fairy Forest deck, and they gave us um, some action-oriented messages. So now we're looking for overall spiritual guidance in terms of this reading, but also in terms of the new moon in Gemini. One more shuffle. Two cards, please, spirit. Oh, okay. We've got one and we've got two. Wow. Well, those are some seriously strong messages, guys. We've got purification. <laughs> We've got purification, angel uh, labiel, and black tourmaline. I mean, it falls absolutely in line with what we're talking about here. We are purging. We are releasing manipulative and negative energy, and we are being faced with a an opportunity to plant new seeds. Okay, so we've got purification. And we've got card number three. Um, purification is card number 14. Next, we have card number three, Archangel Aniel and Pink Calcite. And that is acceptance. Acceptance of who we are. Acceptance of who we are as spiritual beings. Recognizing who we are as spiritual beings, ultimately. Because if it weren't for a spirit, we would not have a physical body to claim our own, right? Okay. So this is not only acceptance of who we are spiritually, but who that translate in, translates into in the physical realm. And notice that this card is all kinds of pink. And there's also some white in there. So this is divine love. This is unconditional love. And understand, look, the first card we got is of the same section within the deck. You see that pink border? All right. Now look at this border. Same one. 
Okay, so the overall theme here is accepting unconditional love, at least from a spiritual point of view. This overall theme is accepting unconditional love, accepting who we are as individuals, accepting who we are as masculine and feminine energies, and embodying both of those masculine and feminine energies as human beings. Okay, um, coming into terms with our emotions coming into terms with our emotional reality and accepting and, and, and accepting that being okay with that there's nothing wrong with that it's who we are guys right so uh, I'm gonna read from both of these so we have card number 14 to start um, black tourmaline and angel labiel purification. No, I'm sorry, not 13, 14. <clears throat> My dad. 14, okay. Purification. Here we go. We bring you the gift of purification. This is your chance to let go of what you no longer wish to hold. It might be a toxic burden within your body, mind, or emotions you wish to be freed from so you can feel lighter happier and more energized to attend to the things that matter most. We come to you at a time when you have become overloaded with energies, thoughts, or even perhaps physical toxins or possessions inhibiting your capacity for joy and vibrancy. If there is any fear within at the prospect of releasing something from your life, be reassured. This cleansing is a loving grace that will help you feel happier we are not here to take anything from you, but rather to free you from what you no longer wish to hold on to. The more you are willing to allow us to assist in this process, the better and clearer you shall feel. Insights into your relationships, choices in life, and issues that, you ha that have confused you will become very clear. You will become more aware of your truths and feel empowered to live your life on your own terms. There is only benefit to gain here, and our blessings come straight from the loving heart of the divine to assist you. I mean, what? I mean, guys, not only is this a, a, a manifestations period, but this is a purging period, too. Lord have mercy. Oof, that's intense, y'all. And, and those of you that are feeling this as more of a purgy type energy... I get it. I really get it. And because I just came out of an extreme purge with that last full moon we had in Sagittarius. So if you didn't necessarily feel the last full moon as a purge and you feel like you should have, you're feeling it now. And this is different for you because not only are you feeling a purge, but an urge to purge, but you're also feeling an urge to manifest. And it's almost like you're being accelerated in this point, at this point, in this moment with this, with this new moon. And that makes perfect sense because a lot of things are accelerating right now. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to say it like that. A lot of things are accelerating right now. A lot of change is happening. Okay. And with change, we really need to become acquainted with acceptance. Archangel Aniel and Pink Stock Calcite. We bring you the gift of acceptance. Rather than encouraging a situation to remain the same, the gift of acceptance empowers you to move through an experience, uncovering the opportunity for personal growth and spiritual development that may be at first hidden behind a challenging set of circumstances. Resistance presents you from being able to see the truth and grow through the opportunities that life brings to you. Acceptance is necessary for you to be present rather than in resistance. When you are present, you can see what is happening more realistically and you become able to respond to it with awareness. Then you shall grow and obtain more power and wisdom, wisdom through that process, whilst you also become capable of receiving the divine assistance that will come to you through any difficulty, that will come to help you, excuse me, that will come to help you through any difficulty. 
Even if a situation seems challenging, your acceptance is the key to transforming it. It brings relief to your heart. It empowers you to take the step forward on your spiritual path that life is presenting to you. Through that step, new opportunities will arise. When you trust that no matter what appears to be, it is safe to trust that life is supporting you to manifest your divine potential, acceptance becomes easier and feels more natural and more joyful. Woo! Wow. That's an intense message. I really, I really want to pull from the Animal Spirit Guidebook. Not the guidebook. <laughs> from the deck. I, sorry, I just read that. <laughs> I really want to pull from the Animal Spirit deck. All right, okay. But I couldn't really see how it was going to land on the, on the spread. So I was hesitant to do so. But there are two cards that want to come out. One. And one more. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay. All right, guys. I got it. <laughs> um, the first card that we can see, because this landed upright. This oh, Well, not upright, but this landed face up. Is tarantula. The second. Again, oh, we're gonna put this up here. The second card, wow, whoa, is Vulture. All right, so these are animal spirits that are wanting to come forward to help us learn this lesson that the new moon in Gemini is bringing towards us, okay? So first we have Tarantula, and this is a fire sign. Or I'm sorry, this is a fire animal, okay? Don't quote me on that just yet. Yep, fire. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, vulture is air. All right, so tarantula at a crossroad, claiming life's purpose. The tarantula represents a moment when a great decision must be made. It involves prioritizing your life's deeper purpose or dharma. A habit or routine from the past is sidetracking you from your dream. Yet a voice inside keeps begging you to refocus your attention. In order to find true happiness, you must choose Dharma. Until you do, satisfaction will be fleeting. The tarantula hovers, patient and calm, like an old friend that knows your inner soul. It already knows you'll choose wisely. When in balance, tarantula follows its intuition. When out of balance, tarantula hesitates and over-intellectualizes. To bring into balance, one must do some daily journaling. All right, so this is absolutely resonating with the rest of the messages here. It's time to see things differently, guys. All right, it's time to do something different. It's time to follow the voice within, which ultimately is the King of Cups upright. Okay, it's time to follow the King of Cups. Follow his guidance. Listen to him because check it, the King of Cups is a masculine energy, so he's practical anyway, guys. Just because he's in tune with his intuition doesn't make him impractical, okay? Finally, we have Vulture. Oops, I just had it and now I've lost it. Where did you go? Where you at? <laughs> oh, goodness. oh God, come on, where are you? Ah. <laughs> Vulture. Guardian and purifier, essential for rebalance. The vulture is perhaps the most misunderstood creature of all. This intriguing bird balances our ecosystem and prevents the spread of disease. It does the dirty work that no one else wants to do and cleans up our messes. The vulture appears when there is a situation that needs to be purified or brought back into balance. Remember, the vulture is greatly undervalued. What you thought was a mistake or tragedy is a blessing in disguise. When in balance, Vulture clarifies and reveals wisdom. When out of balance, Vulture is dramatic and aggressive. To bring into balance, one must clean their space and sage. Luckily, sage is my incense of choice. Hallelujah! Can I get an amen? <laughs> but also, um, the one thing that 
I mean, again, Vulture and Tarantula, both of them are perfect for this reading, okay? But the other thing that um, I realized while I was reading the book was that Vulture reveals wisdom. And if you notice, the Vulture is bald. Vultures are bald. Meaning they don't have hair or superfluous, superfluous stuff to cover the wisdom that they contain and the wisdom that they can reveal. I just thought that was a cool point that I wanted to point out. <sighs> All right, guys. Hi. I'm not going to try to paraphrase anymore. Um, ultimately, you can just go back into the reading and, um, you know, get some messages that you may have missed. But there it is. This is a big time for transformation. And it, it is it is a dual moon. It's like a it's like a full moon and a new moon at once. It's it's a really whoops. It's a really weird situation, to be quite honest. Because it's like which and it's funny because I read an article about um, this new moon in Gemini and it said either this is a new beginning or what the fuck. <laughs> um, which would mean that it's either a new beginning or a purging opportunity. If it is a purging opportunity, take the bull by the horns and purge, guys, okay? Purging ultimately is beneficial. If there are any things that are triggered within you during this time, focus on them, but focus on them with intentions to release and to heal, okay? All right, there it is. I love you guys, and I'll see you guys later. Um, most likely, I'll see you for the next Twin Flame conversation of the week. Yeah? Oh, look! Perfect timing! My laundry's done. Yeah! I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Mwah. Bye!